Mask layers are a core piece of functionality for advanced compositing. They help with blending different layer content together. Let me show you a quick example. I've got a composition here, and I'll show this ring of light layer. It's another image that I've placed into this document, and I'll blend it in by setting its blend mode to screen. However, the bottom and side bounds of this ring of light create a visible seam, so I'll need to blend them away manually. I can go down to the mask icon on the layers panel here, then click it to add a mask layer. This creates a full mask that is clipped into the ring of light layer. What I can now do is select the paintbrush tool from the tools panel on the left. The default brush nozzle is very small and has a hard edge. We'll change both of these parameters. So first, I'll increase the brush width on the context toolbar here then decrease the hardness to 0%. The default brush color is set to black, which is exactly what we need to be able to paint away from this mask. You'll notice as I move the brush nozzle that I am seeing a real-time preview of what will happen when I begin painting. So now I can click drag over the edges of this image to hide them. The main benefit of using masks is that they are non-destructive. For example, I could have selected the Erase Brush tool here and erased away the edges of this ring of light image. That would have permanently deleted the edges, however. With a mask layer, that image information is still there should I wish to bring it back. For example, I'll switch back to the Paintbrush tool, then Paint Away, and remove more areas from the mask. At this point, I can switch from black to white by clicking on the white color here, or by using X on the keyboard. Then I can paint back in over the areas I want to show. Using the X key shortcut is very useful for this workflow. I can use it to quickly toggle over to black and remove the edge detail again. You may have a workflow where you wish to start with a completely empty mask and then paint specific areas back in. I have several images from a light painting session here. I'm going to drag the first image into photo to open it as a new document. I'll then go back out to my file browser and click drag the second image in. Then release the mouse button over this document to place it as an additional image. Notice it appears as a second layer in my layer stack here. I need to align it with the first image, so I'll quickly enable snapping on the toolbar up here, then select the Move tool using V on the keyboard, and drag the image into place until it snaps to the bounds of the document. Now I can go down to the Mask icon, and this time I'll hold Option on Mac and click the icon, or on Windows, I would right-click the icon. Then I'll choose Empty Mask. You'll notice the top image layer has disappeared from view. The mask is automatically set as the active layer. So I can now just switch to my paintbrush tool using B, then toggle across to white using X, and begin painting to reveal a portion of the top image. I can now drag the third image in and place it. Then once again, switch to the Move tool and line the image up. I'll use the same procedure as before. Option click on Mac, right click on Windows, then choose Empty Mask. I'll switch to the Paintbrush tool and paint in over the sky area to reveal it from this third image. Because masks are like any other layer, you can also hide and show them. Hiding the top mask, for example, will make the top image layer completely opaque. Showing it again will reveal the layer content beneath. Right-clicking a mask layer will present several options. Releasing a mask will bring it out to the main layer stack as a parent layer, which may be useful if you simply want to mask all layers beneath simultaneously. To make this mask affect a specific layer again, I can click drag it 
offer it to the thumbnail of a layer, then release the mouse button. Edit Mask will enter solo mode for the mask layer. This can also be achieved by using Option Click on Mac or Alt Click on Windows whilst clicking the layer thumbnail. When a mask is isolated, it is represented as a grayscale bitmap. This makes it easy to see how precise the masking is and gives you the opportunity to amend it if required. To exit solo mode, I can either click on another layer entirely or toggle it again by using Option Click on Mac, Alt Click on Windows on the mask layer. Finally, I'll show you Refine Mask on another example. Here I've used Selection Refinement to mask out this wolf from the background, but I may want to revise the fine detail of the masking. I'll right click the mask layer and choose Refine Mask. This will enter Selection Refinement, where the selection can be anti aliased and matted. To improve this selection, I'll increase border width all the way to 100%. Then I'll click drag over the left hand area to mat it manually. Once I'm happy, I'll click Apply to commit the edits to the mask. And there we go, that was a look at how to use mask layers. Be aware that you can use mask layers across the whole suite of Affinity apps, so you can take these techniques and apply them to Affinity Designer and even Affinity Publisher with complex multi-page publications. Thank you for watching.